Hi. 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 It's uh, nice to meet you. Maybe you can give a short, um, short, um, short introduction of yourself. Uh, you say? And maybe you can give a short introduction of yourself. Okay, my name is Grace Sopoka. I'm a vocal coach and an African arts composer. So I'm also the director of studies at Space Video Media Music and Vocal Institute. Okay, so I've written a couple of pieces, especially with African teens, like um, Uduwatumi Shei for the Bazoon, Shehari Anonkowa for the Bazoon, and um, Naomi Adalamba for for the oboe instrument. So most of my pieces are basically solo pieces, trying to place the African voice to be expressed through several instruments. Got it. And, and I'm also a singer, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, and what is good in musical composition for you, right? You say? Uh, what is good in musical composition yeah, for you? Yeah, Maureen? Yeah. Mu what is good in musical composition? Is that what you yes. said? Yes. I, yes. I didn't yes. yes. Okay, so... For me, for music compositions are more like you being able to express what you feel inside of you. So when I listen to a piece of music, I I try to understand the perspective the composer is coming from because I believe that there's a message that the composer wants to pass across, and that's why he or she is writing that piece of music. So Music composition is an as is, is a way that composers use to express their feelings. And then it also helps others to who feel that way to be able to connect into this divine beauty of music. And uh, how would you describe uh, your own music? Well, my own music, just like I said before, it's more like my expression, my story being put in music and how I feel. And sometimes I'm able to also tell stories like when we have um, Naomi Adalamba for the Ubu, it's more of, it's not my story, it's a story from the Bible and it's in relation to times that we are passing through things that people are passing through. But during that period, I was commissioned to write that piece by Dr. Courtney of University of Iowa. I was commissioned then to write the piece for COVID-19 era, where people were passing through a lot of crisis. So during that period, I had a belief that we would so we will pass through this time when everybody has been locked down. You know, during the lockdown, the world was like, are we going to be like this forever? and all that. So the story was more like, in the Bible, the story of Naomi, who passed through a lot of turbulence, she lost her family, but at the end of the day, God helped her and she got back to where she is. So I believe that even if we were in lockdown, then we would still come out of it. So people should not give up despite what they are passing through. And so putting it into music, people who listen to it can find hope if they are also feeling that way, they are also able to express themselves through listening to the music. So I, I would describe my kind of music as a means to express my voice and also the voice of others. Mm -hmm. Got it. And uh, yeah. would, um, uh, you said that you are using African music, right? Uh, some, some motifs exactly. from African. Yes. Can you just yeah. tell what are you using and what are you? Well, it just comes, you know, sometimes when I listen to other compositions, I'll be like, I wish I can just write like this. But most times, whenever I'm composing, it just relates to my culture, maybe because of my background as an African who lived all her life in Africa and have also explored some other countries in Africa. So 
I've heard a lot of the kind that kind of music being soaked inside of me. So when I'm composing, it's always in that um in that in that's that's how my composition is always based around. Uh -huh. So um I would say <laughs> just it's also a way for me to use the African voice to express it through some Western instruments, you know. Like over here in Nigeria, we have music schools and sometimes most of the music schools you go to what you learn are Western instruments. But then imagine when we also have our songs being played through those instruments, not just all the time we are here, we are playing Mozart and Handel and all that. So we are having songs that relate to us so that when we are playing through those instruments too, we can also feel like we are playing, we are home, we are also home and we are playing something that actually we understand. So, right, so I understand it's like more like African music and plus um, uh, Western instruments. Huh? This is the combination. Exactly, exactly. And how you came up to this combination? What triggered you? Well, I didn't do anything special, to be honest. It's just, just like from the beginning, I've always said it's expressing my voice. So I didn't do anything special, but it first started with being commissioned by um, many um, Western um, performers and instrumentalists. They would say, okay, Grace, please, we would want you to write a piece for the bassoon or maybe for the oboe or for the clarinet. And then once I'm being commissioned on that and I begin to work, and most times when they say we are commissioning you, they'll be like, you're free to write anything you want. Just write a piece for us. We trust what we want to do. And most times whenever I just want, it's not that I sit down and say, I want to make sure it is African. So when I begin to write, it's just African-like. Sometimes it's not even the language I speak from Nigeria. Like I'm I'm from the Igbo tribe in Nigeria. Sometimes I write Yoruba. Sometimes I even write from the Republic of Bene that I grew up in. Sometimes I write just based on the languages I hear around me here, the tone, the melody around me. That's what I'm inspired by. And I begin to write and I submit it to them. And when they play it on their instruments, it turns out beautiful. Mm, got it, got it. And um, um, <clears throat> can you imagine, uh, if, you would, uh, if you would live in Berlin, would your music would be different? Or in other countries, if you would live in Europe, would your music would be different? Well, I don't know because I've not yet lived there. <laughs> but I feel I know that one thing about my music is it's my voice and how I it's an expression of my feelings into music. So if I'm living in in the Britain, I know that my background, my African background, will still be there, but possibly. I would also be influenced by the ones I'm also hearing around me too. Got it. So they may be, they may not really be a, a difference, but it's 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 just <laughs> I don't know how to put it. <laughs> yeah. And if you would be a man, right? Would your music would if, be different? If you would be a man. Well, if I would be a man. A man. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't think so. I think music is divine and it's peculiar to everybody and their own taste and their experiences and their voice and their expression and all that. So if I was a man and I've had all the experiences that I've also had, then I would still have this type of music. And if I were a woman, I would also have this kind of music. So um i just feel like our music is your own expression of what you want what you feel that's what you write or okay. what you um people relate with you like someone can come to you and tell you a story and say i have this story and i want you to compose a song around the story so you can relate to the person and then 
write a music based on that story. So, though things influence somebody's music, but I would say that it's still peculiar to the intention of the composer. Got it. And how? Uh, and what is your way of composing? Uh, how you start and uh, and and what kind of stages you go through? Well, like for my composition, most of the time when I'm com commissioned, I would ask the com the person who is commissioning me. I'll ask the person a few questions. I'll be like, okay, what do you? What's the theme? What are you looking out for in this composition? Some people may say, just do do whatever comes to your mind. Say, I just want to play something different from my instrument. Okay, so I've gotten that idea. Some people may say, okay, this is what we are working towards. I'm having a concert around this and I want to compose something around this. So I'll work on that. Then someone may say, um, I'm having this. Uh, just whatever they say, I will be able to put that in, into writing. And then I begin to work on that. But if it's not a commissioned work and it's just maybe a, an inspiration comes down to me, I would also put it into writing. And then I begin to meditate on the world. So like people who know me know that I always love to involve um, God. I'm a Christian. So each time I'm, I'm thinking about it and I'm meditating upon what I'm about to, to, to do. And then when I'm very convinced that I've gotten an idea of how it goes, I begin to write the song down because, you know, Every idea that is not written down does not materialize. So I always write my songs down as I feel. So when I'm at, when it's on writing, before I would now go to my computer and I begin to add it all up together and prepare it as a piece, and then send it off to those who commissioned me or to platforms for. Mm -hmm. Got it. And uh, <clears throat> and uh, what kind of technologies are you using, or softwares or hardwares? Or yeah, well, I use Sibelius. That's what I use. Uh, I've tried other softwares, but I I just I just connect more to Sibelius because I've been using it for years now. So. Every time I'm working, I, I know all the shortcuts on Sibelius, so I can be sleeping and I'll be composing on Sibelius. So I don't see any need for me to use another software. Yes. Because I get all that I need for now on Sibelius, because I know technology keeps improving. And before you know it, if Sibelius does not keep up with what they are giving us, then we composers may switch to another software but for now i think Sibelius is okay for me yeah yeah and um and how your music changed uh, during last 10 years well um like i told you before <laughs> um last 10 years i was 20 <laughs> so as of then, I wasn't really composing like this. I was just um, doing other people's work because I was also I was a student back then, so I was doing other people's work and I haven't really explored out mine. But as time goes on, after graduation and all that, you have the chance to begin to explore what you have learned in school. I began to have experiences to working with people. I've worked with special people uh, as a music therapist for some time. And it also opened my ear, my ears and opened my mind to be creative in this music industry. I've, I've also been commissioned by people. So because of those experiences, my music has gradually changed to what I'm releasing this time. Even I know that as I'm taking further studies as well, I would also, my music would keep evolving with the times and the situations that I, we found ourselves in currently. 
Good. Yeah, so over the years, it's been a, it's been a lot of um, evolving process. And um, uh, what do you fear the most as composer? Well, I don't, I don't know what I fear as a composer, but I know that one thing <laughs> composers pass through is funding to have your music out there to be able to share your voice, especially here in our country. So many composers don't have that medium to have people even to perform the work that they have written. So sometimes they need funding to even be able to have their works performed out there. So that's one challenge. But one thing I know is that every challenge can always is a stepping stone to success. So despite the challenges, I remember back then I used to organize concerts. I used to organize concerts, regular concerts, where people will come and my works will also be displayed and people can hear it. You have to pay musicians and all that. It wasn't easy with the funding because within the process of organizing such concerts, you will also be the one funding it, working your, your head out and all that so that you can be able to sponsor the programs that you're using to showcase your music. So funding and all that is not um, easy. Um, but I know that every challenge is a, stump, is, a, is a step to success. So we would always find a way to overcome it. Yeah. And, <clears throat> sorry, and why do you still compose? You, why do I still compose? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Because I love it. It's my passion. It's my it's my way of expressing myself. I could just be with you now and I'll be talking and then I'll just have some feelings and then I begin to compose and I just see myself composing. So it's my passion, maybe I would say it's also my calling to express such music. Because sometimes if you have an inspiration and you're not able to express it. The inspiration will never leave. It will never get to leave here on earth. But when you have the, the inspiration and you are able to express it, it will be a living thing. So people will begin to know about it. It will come into existence. Everybody will know that, yes, there's a song like this, and this song has inspired me just by listening to it. So I love to compose because it's one thing that I think I've been called to do. It's another thing that I love, and it's another way of expressing my voice and helping others to express theirs as well. And um, how uh, how new music landscape right in in Nigeria how it's changed during this century? Yes, I know. Like the time you asked me ten years ago, music ten years ago, I know back then it's especially the art music. If it's for the um, commercial music and the pop music in Nigeria, it's really, really, really has gone far. Our musicians are really doing so well out there. But for the art music, you know, we keep struggling, but it's not where it has been back then. Back then, few people would even attend a classical music concert over here in Nigeria. But now I think I think our country is beginning to be more exposed. People are beginning to learn music. People are beginning to be interested in studying music. And so because of that, in the process, we are having people who are being more educated about good music and all that. So like for the art music industry, we are growing and it's not like it used to be before. It's at least there's a step. And I know yeah. that. In years to come, it will be far better than what it is now. So we are not yet there. And who are audience? Who are usually are coming to the, to those concerts? Well, you know, friends and families will be there, and then colleagues because a lot of people are beginning to learn. So many people who are learning, many people who are also following us, they come around for the concerts. Maybe your fans and all that. Well, we shall they come around, so they, they, they do come around. 
though it's not that large like the pop musicians here in Nigeria, but at least we've got a reasonable amount of people getting interested in listening to art music here in Nigeria. Good. And uh, and what is like a musical trends of art music? Uh, like, uh, what are the main uh, trends? How how composers write? Uh, is it more like multimedia, or it's more uh, combining with African motives, or what are the main main trends? What you see? Okay, you mean how the composers um sell their work? So I don't. Um, know and how um how. Uh, how um what kind of language right are uh, combining various language are composers are are in, in Nigeria uh, uh, right right in what kind of language okay right write their works yes. well we we speak English here in Nigeria so like English is our dealing is our main language because lingua franca because we have so many tribes in Nigeria. Like I am from the Igbo tribe, we have the Yoruba tribe, we have the Aosa tribe and all that. So let's say I hold a concert and I'm yeah. only singing in Igbo, the Yorubas will not understand me, the Aosas will not understand me, the thief person will not understand me, the Ijo will not understand me. So there are different tribes here in Nigeria. So we, the one language you speak here in Nigeria is English. So composers write in English, some write in their native language. It's just as it comes to them, they write. Yes. So <clears> it's <throat> mainly in your language, English. Yes. And music wise, are they more like uh, West, uh, like Western uh, classical music, or it's more like African music, or it's more like they are adding some dance and multimedia, or what is Okay, some of the mu some of the composers write like Western actors. There's some of them that when you listen to it, you will be shocked. You're like, wow, is this a Nigerian that wrote this? You'd be like, this is amazing. And maybe that person has never even crossed the borders of Nigeria and gone outside the shores of Nigeria. So just like I said, it's mainly what they feel like writing. Some of them, I know some composers from Nigeria that have written songs that really sound native, like Nigerian songs. And they've also written songs that are pure, like the Western style of writing at the So um, it just depends. It's peculiar to the composer and to his style of writing. Mm -hmm. Got it. And um, last question, what is the role of new music? in a Nigerian society. You say, sorry, can you repeat it? Yeah. What is the role of uh, new, uh, of contemporary art music or art music uh, in Nigerian society? Okay, so um, for now, it's really helping us to study more about our music and also to preserve our culture. Because I believe that in a few years to come, let's say in 100 years to come, people would want to go back and say, okay, um, I want to hear what it sounds like back then. And they would begin to study works like my work. <laughs> and they will begin to study other works by other Nigerian or African art musicians as well to hear what they came up with during this time. So I believe that I know for now we are not yet there in getting a large audience to see us and appreciate us and all that. But I know that in years to come, people really appreciate that we are doing this work because it will help to really understand more about our music and more about our culture. Even others from other parts of the world can say, okay, would use this music to study this language or the culture or the of the African people or 
the Igbo people or maybe the Yoruba people. Well, let's listen to this kind of music we to study. But if we don't have it, then it becomes very difficult because I remember there were times, during the times I was still studying, there were times when we would hear that it's difficult to really get pieces by African composers. It's not easy to get them, except those who have been able to travel out of the country to study, they would find a way to um, publish their works and all that. But other than that, it's not easy to really get to um, get access to African music. So it's now becoming, if not going, if that had persisted, I'm sure that in years to come, there'll be no trace to find out how our music actually looks like. So this African art music is like a way to preserve the culture, a way to preserve the music, a way to preserve our voice so that those who will come, not now, not in the next generation, but in the upper generation, mm -hmm. will have something to learn. Yeah. Thank you very much for this conversation. Thank you so much, Marines, for having me.